everybody? This is your boy Malik back with another video for y'all. And today we're going to do a video on a tank. We're going to do a video on a powerful, very torquey tank. I mean, look, I know that a lot of y'all are trying to get away from Ford's vehicles because they're turbocharging things and downsizing their motors. But what I got right here is a, oh my gosh, again. One of those vehicles that you put it in drive and it just takes off before you can put your foot on the gas. That's how much power it has. This is the 2020 Ford Expedition Limited. Now, this particular one is two-wheel drive, all right? I get it. It does come with four-wheel drive. You can get a four-wheel drive Expedition, but I'm gonna flip this camera around and I'm gonna look at the vehicle while I talk a little bit about it. So yeah, this is the 2020 Ford Expedition um, Limited. Now. What I mean by one of those vehicles that's powerful, I mean, when you've got something that's this big, you've got something that you're going to use to tow stuff. I mean, look at the size of this thing. I mean, this is like huge. This makes older generations look little. This is not the long wheelbase version. Um, this is the same platform that the Lincoln Navigator is built on. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you that the Ford Expedition is a whole lot cheaper because where this vehicle starts topping out, on price range is where the, the Lincoln Navigator starts to begin. And then you start piling stuff on top of the Navigator that it already comes with and you can easily get that thing to almost $100,000. This thing right here, you know, you got a family of, let me look here and count the seats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven passenger vehicle. This is a seven passenger vehicle as it says. You can configure it to carry more people if you want to. Now, I just did a video on the 2020 Ford Explorer ST. Um, yeah, it's a three row SUV, but if you really, really looking for three rows, the Expedition is the one you probably need to go with. And I highly advise you to get a four wheel drive one because if you get a two wheel drive vehicle this big, I would hate for you to get it stuck somewhere. Um, but with that being said, this vehicle right here has a wheelbase and a ground clearance that is a lot higher and a lot longer than the Ford Explorer. So if you're looking for that big family hauler, the one that's got the power to tow, this is the 3.5. This is the 3.5 liter V6 with twin turbos. And let me tell you something, Ford has a way of tuning their engines to do what they want it to do and to do what it needs to do for that vehicle. This one in particular has over 400 horsepower and over 400 pound feet of torque. You know, so in fact, I want to say this one's got 480 pound feet of torque. And yes, they use that exact same motor in the Lincoln Navigator, and it has 500 and it has 500 plus pound feet of torque, um, which makes me believe the Navigator is probably heavier than the Expedition because it's got more stuff on it. Um, but with that being said, I mean, I'm standing here, and this vehicle is just like I'm looking over it, and I'm, it's it's taller than me. It's taller than I am right now. So, you know, it's one of those vehicles where if you are standing next to it, you can't see over it unless you're like six foot tall. So what stands out to me is what they call these power running boards. So you touch the door handle and you grab on it, bam, power running board. You close the door and they go right back in. Yes, I do have the key on my personnel, so it did just chirp. That's one of the things that older SUVs did not have because, and I actually like those. The reason is, when running boards are sitting down, what happens is if you're going off road or if you're going over a curb or something, I mean, if you want to drive over a curb, you most certainly can in something like this. Those running boards sitting there, imagine you driving over the curb and when the wheel drops down, the running boards fall on the curb. Now you're stuck unless you got four wheel drive. So when those running boards go up like that, it moves them out of the way. It gives you more clearance under the ground. So that's another thing that stands out to me. Another thing is these power folding mirrors. They do fold in and out and they do actually have a camera under them. The Explorer had that too. That's what gives you that 360 degree view when you put the camera on. And at any given time, you can access that camera even if the vehicle's not in reverse. Now, you probably see the headlights look like this. Like when you're driving down the road, you've probably seen expeditions with the lights that look like this. Well, that's the daytime running lights. That's another thing that stands out to me right there. You know, Ford's kind of got that equal sign, that stand out, that bright, look at me, I'm here, I'm a Ford, I'm driving. You are going to direct your attention towards me. That's what this thing has. You cannot miss this thing driving down the road. 
Um, it also does have a camera right under the Ford logo. So yes, and you know we got those famous grill shutters back there that everybody loves. Again, that's for aerodynamics and fuel economy. So they will open and close while you're driving down the road. What that does is, for some reason, it keeps the engine warmer. Like it's blocking the radiators, basically what it's doing. So when it needs to heat the engine up a little bit faster, it'll close those things. And on a colder day, you'll see them like at half staff sometimes. Um, and that's just one of the things Ford puts on there for, you know, it, it's, it's efficient. It drives it efficient. When you got something this big, you've got, anytime you got a motor that's got almost 500 horsepower, you're going to be guzzling gas. So Ford does things like that to get that gas mileage up a little bit higher. Um, another thing is these super bright headlights this thing has. This thing's got some of the brightest headlights I have ever seen. And they're not even on high beam right now. The high beam brings on the second set down there. And your turn signals are LEDs on this vehicle. So when you unlock it, it's gonna make your entire front yard turn yellow. So, I mean, if you're turning, people can't hit you and say, oh, you didn't use a turn signal. No, it, they're, they're right there. And then down, you see these fog lights. The fog lights actually have a projector beam back there. So they're kind of like a projector beam fog light. So. It, it's almost like a second another set of headlights down there fog lights are really for like projecting on the ground so when you're turning you don't hit a curb and they also kind of stab through the fog because when you drive through the fog you don't turn your high beams on you're supposed to turn on your fog lights and then we've got these huge wheels right here these are 22 inch rims that this expedition is sitting on and they're kind of like black and silver painted and you've got these massive brake pads because if you equip it right, you can tow stuff with this thing. And you, I mean, I'm not even gonna say tow, you can snack stuff with this thing. I mean, if you wanna snatch down the side of McDonald's, you surely can with one of these. I mean, this thing's got some torque like no other. I mean, this thing's got power. And then you've got your racks up above it. Um, all of your doors do have that smart key access and the ridges for locking it are right here. So you touch it and that locks. And any given time you can just grab that you know, grab it right there and boom, there goes those power door, power running boards right there. You also get that famous keypad right here too that Ford has. So this is one of the things that's become more common on Fords. You don't have to have the key on you at all. You just walk up to it. Whether you have the key on you or not, it's gonna recognize your touch. You enter that code in, it's gonna unlock the door for you. You grab that door handle, you open it, bam. There goes those door, those eye, that right there. <laughs> um, inside, you've got this gorgeous, just smooth black light. Back in the day, the leather used to have wrinkles in it in the older vehicles. Now it's like tightly wrapped and everything just matches. Like you don't have one piece of the interior that just, it, it's like an eyesore. You look at something for so long and it stands out. It's just like an eyesore. Inside this thing, you have so much stuff in here that's just customizable. And I mean, I, sat, I did actually have to sit down with this one for about five or 10 minutes and just kind of get a real feel for myself, touch some things and figure out what this button does, what that button does, what this setting does and all that stuff. You have seats that move all different types of ways. These are your seat controls, um, your lumbar controls and stuff like that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get in and see exactly what this thing has to offer. When you get in and you close the door, the um, power running boards, they do close. This particular one does have the B&O sound system too. And the defrost for the vent actually is in this duct right here. So when you close it, it mates up and it contacts with that right there. So your defrost is directly on the window. The days of defrost sitting here and blowing on the window, yeah, those days are over with. And when you close the door, you can actually hear you can actually hear the running boards um, go back up. And if you just look in here, this is actually the same dashboard kind of similarity, same setting right here that you would see inside the F-150. So they've taken it and they've put it inside the Expedition and it actually matches. It does not just, you know, like it, it doesn't look out of place. You know, you don't have some huge screen that just sits there and just pops up off the dash. It's in there and it looks like it's supposed to be there. To start this vehicle, you put your foot on the brake, and when you do, when you actually turn the vehicle off, 
your seat, your driver's seat's going to move back and out of the way. So if you get in and your seat's not where you want it to be at, just leave it until you start it. Because when you start it, it's actually going to slide your seat forward. So unless you made an adjustment to the seat, nine times out of 10, when you first get in the vehicle, it's going to move your seat right back to where you had it. It does that so you can get in and out of it a lot easier. Um, I'm going to try to go through some of these controls a little bit briefly. Um, these are all your climate controls down here. I'm burning up because the heat is hot. I did have it running before I got in here. In this display right here, yes, you do have a analog and a digital display at the same time. So your, your gauges, they're analog and your center screen right here is a lot larger than what you see in most other Ford vehicles right there. Across the top in the middle section, you've got your oil temperature, you've got your engine coolant temperature, your fuel gauge, and that looks like another one of these is going to be for the transmission one of these that say fahrenheit is going to be for the transmission because i did sit down and go through that a little bit um and all of your indications for what settings you have your headlights your auto start stop your lane keeping system what gear you've got the vehicle in and all that stuff's going to be right there in the center um, so yes, if you hit that okay button, if you happen to be low on gas, you hit that okay button and you can see vehicle info. So you can see your, your engine idle hours. That's one of the things that most people who buy older police interceptors that, you know, idle hours is basically how long has the engine in this vehicle been running? And it keeps a track of that the entire time you have this vehicle. Like it never, it never goes away. You can reset it, but you, you know, it's almost like it never goes away. I'm going to hit this button on the steering wheel to the left. All right, that's going to show me, uh, you know, vehicle info. Do I want to look at my gauges? You know, turbo boost. You do. I mean, you've got turbos on this thing. Do you want to see turbo boost, transmission temp, you know, back to the engine information and stuff like that? Your digital speedometer. You can have a digital speedometer. So essentially, you can have multiple speedometers on here. So you've got the, re the original one that's never going to, like, go away. It's there. You can't just, I mean, it's your speedometer. And then you've got a digital one. So you can see, like, you know how it gets in the middle of 40 and 50, but it's in the middle of 45 and 50. You want to know what exact speed you're going. Um, your tire pressure. And back to the turbo boost. So I'm going to go to the left again. I can look at transmission temperature. You know, when you got a vehicle this big, you're going to have some heat in that transmission. Um, I'm going to go to the left. And then hit the left again. You've got your trip computer, all that stuff, your auto start, stop engine on normal operation i'll get into how you can turn that off here in a minute you've got fuel economy off-road status you got you can configure your screens and stuff like that i'm going to go back to the right because i know there's some stuff i missed yes there we go towing status so if you if you happen to tow you go in and you see all this information you can set up your towing um if you want to tow and stuff like that you've got your off-road so basically what it, what this is if you had four wheel drive these two up front the two wheels in the front this is basically your frame right here the, the, the drive train right here and when you start slipping it's going to show up which side is slipping and which side is gripping and which side is putting the most torque to um I really don't know a lot about that. Here's your blind spot information. You do have a blind spot system on this vehicle. Cross traffic alert, pre-collision. Um, I mean, that's just about what you're going to see on just about all four vehicles. I mean, it almost comes standard on all four vehicles. Active braking, pre-collision on. You can change the sensitivity. Um, if you want to go, like, especially if you're towing a trailer, you definitely want to want to up that sensitivity in the vehicle. Um, active braking, you definitely want that to be on because if you look down for five seconds, you've traveled almost a football field. You've probably traveled a football field and a half if you're going 80 miles an hour. Your cruise control, you can have it just on normal cruise control or adaptive. Adaptive is when the vehicle in front of you slows down, the vehicle uses these sensors up here that are hidden behind here to keep you at a certain distance. Um, and it actually does braking and speeding up for you. And you've got your lane keeping system. Uh, you hit the OK button, you can go in and change the mode alert plus aid or just aid or just alert you. Your sensitivity, you can change that up or change it down. You can make it low, normal, or high. I almost would advise you, like when you first get this vehicle, everything is going to be on normal. I advise you to go in and turn that up because the sooner it reacts, the more chances you have of not hitting the car in front of you. Um, so that's just about it for that screen right there. These are going to be your volume controls, your... Please say a command. Set temperature to 83. 
Setting temperature to 83 degrees. You can change the temperature and stuff like that. So this is all about hands-free. I mean, any vehicle, any Ford vehicle that has the updated sync system, you can change the temperature in there just by saying that. You don't have to take your eyes off the road. You just hit that button right there. Set temperature to 72. Did you say 70 degrees? Yes. Close enough. Setting temperature to 70 degrees. It's all about keeping your eyes on the road. And here's how you would answer your phone, hang up the phone. An, a, as an additional feature that you see right here, these arrows up and down right here, this is how you close the gap or widen the gap for the adaptive cruise control. You're used to just seeing other buttons right here, but now when you've got your cruise control on, you'll see it right there when it pops up, it's on. You can set the distance. So I'm gonna hit the top button right here. You can set the distance for less or more. You can widen it. Like I said, you can make that gap as wide as you want to. And it does change. And basically, the farther away that gap is, the farther away the vehicle is going to stay away from the vehicle in front of you while you're cruise controlling. Um, you do have heated seats and a heated steering wheel. My butt is getting hot, and I had to realize that why it's getting hot, because this vehicle has heated seats. Your climate controls are all down here, but they are also on the screen. So you can change all of your climate controls on the screen. You can turn off the rear climate control if you want to. You can adjust the rear climate control from the front. You can lock the rear climate control out. So if you've got kids that like to touch and, and mingle and play with it and turn, you can lock that out. I mean, this thing is so customizable, you can turn it all the way off in the back if you want to. Or you can have it the where it's on auto, or you can unlock it. Basically, when you unlock it, they can set their climate control in the rear different than you can up front. You've got power outlets, you've got plug-in outlets, you've got a wireless charger. Um, the higher-end Ford vehicles, I'm starting to see a lot more wireless chargers. Basically, if you have an iPhone or a phone and the charging port quits working, do not go buy another phone. Just see if it can be wirelessly charged you sit that wire that phone right there and it will charge without you even having all these wires the days of having wires is over with you've got your regular usb port and a usb 2.0 for the newer usbs right there and then more storage compartments off in there if you can see that your phone controls um your navigation this vehicle does have navigation on it it does have apple carplay so when you connect it um, I want to say this one can almost do it with Bluetooth, but some of the Ford vehicles, I know my vehicle, my Ford Fusion, for instance, you have to actually have the, the phone plugged in. You've got a Sirius XM travel link. You've got all your settings right here for your navigation. Um, this vehicle does have a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot, and it actually can connect to a Wi-Fi network. So if for some reason Ford releases an update over the air, it will download the updates. You can change your Ford Pass. Um, it, this vehicle does have four pass on it, valet mode, voice control, all those things right there. And these are going to be just kind of your, you know, your mainstream radio controls for like presets and stuff like that. Um, and I'm looking for a CD player and oh my goodness, I don't see it. <laughs> you can actually turn the screen off right there. So you hit it one time and it goes to like a screen saver. You hit it a second time, it goes to completely off. If you look above the screen, you see your trash control. I have no idea why you'd want to turn that off. As much power as this vehicle has, you hit that button and you'll see it pop up on the screen. Trash control off. You cannot actually turn it all the way off. Until you see the words advanced track off, you have not completely disabled anything. I would advise you to leave that on. This right here is going to be your lane keeping system. So the button directly to the right of the hazard light button is your lane keeping system you would want that to be on as well. This is gonna be your auto start stop. So when you come to a stop, the engine shuts off. When you take your foot off the brake, the engine powers back up before you even move your foot to the gas. Now, one thing that I did miss on that Explorer video, there's a camera button. You push that button and even when the vehicle is in park, you can look at the camera and see just how close you are to what's in front of you or around you or behind you or get a panoramic view. So that's when those mirrors cameras come in. So the cameras that are under the mirrors, under both the mirrors, it gives you that view of kind of what's along the side of the vehicle. And you hit it again and that turns it off. So that's just about it for all the electronics. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, it does literally 
it can be configured in so many different ways. I mean, it's it's you when you anytime you got a system like this and a Ford vehicle, it can be configured just about any way you want it to. Now, I want to move down. This is going to be your trailer backup assist. So you hit this button right here. Of course, you would have to add a trailer. So once you press that button once, you won't press that button again unless it instructs you to. You can go in and you can hit add a trailer. I mean, you can go change all these trailers, like trailer A, default, electric surge, none. You know, I don't really want to mess with all that stuff. But if you hit it again, it can get you out of the um, out of the trailer and stuff like out of the trailer settings right there. Basically, it assists you in backing up a trailer. So for those of you that don't really know how to drive a trailer, but you just so happen to be towing a trailer, it can help you because we all know that when you're driving with a trailer and you're driving in reverse, you steer the opposite of what your mind thinks to steer. So it's almost like they said on cars, you steer right to go left, but the only difference is you're not drifting. Um, I'm gonna get myself out of this right now, or I can just go to the left to get back to my trip computer and stuff like that. Um, you can actually see a fuel history. And of course, anytime you have a Ford like this, you've got keys that you can configure to limit certain things. It's called Ford My Key. All those things come on these vehicles. So if you loan it to your teenager and you know they drive like a maniac, you hand them the key that they don't know about and it can limit them to whatever speed you set it at. Um, and then valet mode will basically, if you want your car to be parked by a person who's valeting it, it was not allow it would not allow them to abuse your car. I mean, it don't it restricts a lot of things. I'm gonna move down to the gear shifter. You're starting to see this gear shifter in just about all the four vehicles now. I mean, heck, for God's sakes, it's inside the Shelby GT500. It's the first time an automatic transmission period has been available in a GT500. But this makes it to where you're no longer looking at that ugly stem that's on the side of the steering wheel. Those days are over with for Ford, just about. Um, now, if you ever happen to have to tow this vehicle, it may say M or it may say S. The cars usually say S. The SUVs and the trucks will say M. If you put it in neutral, you're gonna wanna press that button. That's called your stay in neutral mode. So if you ever want to tow it, just make sure that you have it in stay in neutral mode if the wheels are going to be touching the ground. Um, and basically, if you take your foot off the brake, that locks the shifter and it locks it in neutral. Um, your drive modes. This vehicle has multiple drive modes. That's going to come in handy when you have a four-wheel drive. Um, it's a lot more useful if you get a four-wheel drive. But basically, you hit that drive mode button, you've got snow, wet mode, tow, haul mode, sport mode, and eco mode, and then normal mode. I mean... You go to sport mode and you're you're asking for a Formula One SUV that weighs triple as much as a Formula One car. I mean, when I say that, I don't think you guys understand how much power these EcoBoost V6s have. I mean, I literally just put just just the natural weight of my foot on the accelerator and it took off like a rocket. And I'm just trying to get out of the parking lot. Like it, it going from the V8s to something that's got the responsiveness of this. It's, I mean, you've got power beyond what you're used to. Now, I will say one thing that's a little bit different is these plus and minus buttons right here. So if you put it in drive and you hit that M, this is gonna be how you change what gear it's in. So when you hit it in the M mode, you press that M button, you will see the M pop up. And when you hit that plus and minus, that's, that's gonna be where you can change the gears. This one does not have paddle shifters. So you're actually gonna be doing that with these buttons right here. And at any given time, you can just press that M button. This one does have the park assist, which is not available right now. I think you've got to set it up. Um, but it does have park assist on it. So that means you can parallel park. You can, you know what? I'm going to put it in drive and just see. I don't think it's available on this one. Yeah, I don't think it's set up. You have to go in and set that type of stuff up. Um, either that or it's not available on this model, but anytime um, it's got to be available because it's on the, it, the buttons there And now you come to the massive amount of storage space and just random cup holders I mean, I'm, I, we can all agree that's where you want to put your change and stuff like that You've got a huge compartment in here of just ample space and if you look even closer there is a light in there So, you know, that's one of the things Ford's also doing. They're putting lights in their armrests and deeper down in there there's a 12 volt power outlet. So if you look right here, there's a 12 volt power outlet in there. 
So, I mean, you've got places to plug in your radar detectors, your, I don't know why you want to plug in a GPS, but you can. I mean, it's just, it's, it's there if you need it. All right, now we get to look above our heads. That's the famous panoramic moon roof slash sun roof. So, these buttons right here are going to be to open the, I guess you can say the shade to see out. These buttons here are going to be what you see to open the actual sunroof. Now, a lot of times you see the one button combined, but this one right here, that's one going to be the one that you use to tilt the, the sunroof. You know how you see the sunroof tilted up? It's just letting air in the back of the sunroof. It's not opening the entire sunroof. But I'm going to hit this button here, and you see it opening right there. And it stops halfway. You hit that same exact button again, and my gosh, my butt is hot. This, these heated seats are really kicking right now. And it goes all the way back. Again, it's another one of those situations where only the front half opens. So, you know, you hit that button right there, and that's going to tilt it up. And you hit it again. Uh-oh. You to, to untilt it, you're going to hit the forward button. So you hit that button to tilt it up and you hit that forward button to untilt it. And then if you want to open it, you just... And when you do that, you do get this deflector that comes up right here. So when you close it, you'll actually see that deflector go down. And I'm going to close all this stuff up and I'm going to hop in the back. You do also get dual zone climate control. I don't want to miss that because that is one of the, the more important things that we have. And your heated steering wheel controls, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but I don't want to miss anything in the front. That's going to be for your heated steering wheel. So when you go to the, the home, say if you get somewhere, you go back to the audio and stuff like that, you hit that mute button and it will show up right here, right under the connect the phone. It's weird that they put it under connect the phone, but they did. Um, that's going to be for your heated steering wheel. So when you're grabbing that steering wheel on a 20 degree day or a negative 20 degree day, that steering wheel is going to be warm and it's going to unthaw those hands for you. I'm going to get out and hop in the back, and I'm going to show you. Your door handle is hidden right here. You're not, you don't actually have a traditional handle. Um, and, of course, you see all of your controls right here for the unlock and lock, and you've got three-seat memory. This button right here is going to be to drop the rear headrest in the back. This opens your tailgate. So when you hit that, or I should, should I say lift gate? That's your lift gate. And you push that button again. God, I love that door chime. <laughs> um, it is a little bit faster than it was on the Explorer. When you hear that door chime that fast, that means the tailgate or the lift gate is closing. All of your headlight controls and fog light controls and your brightness and dimmer for your screen in front of you. When you dim this, this dims the entire... Um, I mean, it dims this, this, all of these lights up here. Now, let's talk about where's your parking brake because I cannot believe y'all have not caught that the parking brake is not here yet. Your parking brake sits right there. So, to unengage it, oh wow, you actually don't have to put your foot on the brake. Yes, you do. You have to put your foot on the brake and push it to unengage it or disengage and then you pull it to engage it. This button right here is what you call the pedal adjusters. So I'm gonna turn my flash on so y'all can see down there. So this is something Ford's been doing for a long time. I mean, my granddad's 2000 Lincoln Navigator has this. You can move, and you really can't see it moving, but you can actually move the pedals forwards or backwards. So it's one of those things where if you've got short legs but you don't want to be hunched up on the steering wheel you can move the pedals um i mind you when you push the pedal all the way down it's going to limit how far you can actually push it so it's kind of one of those things if you move the pedals all the way forward the, you can actually press the pedal even further um so yeah you can move the pedals forwards and backwards hop out and i'm gonna hop in the back and yes those famous rails just let my they, they just let themselves down you talk about a true SUV, I mean, look at how much space you've got here. I mean, you. this is me sitting behind myself and I'm six feet tall. I mean, look at all this space. I mean, I can literally sit here and another person could sit in my lap and their knees would still not be touching the front seats. 
Um, again, you've got that little ridge right there where it kind of protects the carpet until you get in. You can move these seats forwards and backwards. You can let them up and down. Now, you've got the same climate control in the back as you do in the front. So until somebody comes back here and adjusts it, it's going to default to what's set up the, at the front. So any, any, anytime somebody comes back here, you know, they can turn theirs completely off if they want to. You do also get second row heated seats. So you've got heated seats in the back and it's digital back here. I mean, you can actually set a temperature up, down. You got a, oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at this. You've got your own media controls back here. Clock. You've got a, you, I mean, it's almost like you can have your own little radio back here. You have a 110 volt um, AC power outlet back here. You've got a DC, I'm gonna get this off. There it is, you've got a DC 12 volt power outlet. And then you've got two more USB. <laughs> I mean, you've got all these, I mean, this thing's got so much stuff on it. I mean, if anybody sits back here and they can't charge their phone, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you've got speakers here, here, just everywhere these seats are just i don't i mean now these are what you call the cabin seats so you know these are a little bit bigger than the explorers are i'm actually gonna have to turn the light on because it is so these seats are so darn black i'm gonna turn this light on so we can actually see a little bit more back here there we go look at how it just gleams back here i mean you've got room to just stretch out back here if you want to I'm gonna hop in the back seat now and I'm gonna show you what a true third row seater is. You see how far off those seats are from the ground versus the Explorer? Like I said, I'm honest in my videos. I mean, I don't like to, to sit up here and say, oh, the Explorer's got third row seating, but it's comfortable because you saw how high my legs were in the Explorer. I love the Explorer to death. I love Ford to death, but honesty is what actually gains the customer. I'm gonna hop my little six foot self back there and we're gonna see exactly what it's all about. Now this is a difference right here. You see how my legs are more almost straight than they are pointed up? If you see this, more of my legs are being supported by the seat. Like my, I'm literally sitting back here and it's comfortable. Like I'm not sitting like, I'm not sitting like I'd be sitting on my butt. Like if I'm sitting on the ground and my legs would be up like this and my bottom's down like this. You know what I'm talking about. It's an uncomfortable angle. I'm gonna push this headrest back. Um, I wanna talk about how comfortable you can make yourself back here. It's comfortable default, but I'm gonna talk about how comfortable you can make yourself. Now I will say this, I am touching, but that's because I moved these seats all the way back. You can actually slide, if you reach under the seat and you, under these seats right here, and you grab, you can move the seats forwards and backwards. But the rear seats, they get power seats. So these buttons right here, watch this. See that right there? Ha! 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 Beat that Chevrolet. Beat that GMC. I know you don't got it because you're not as good as Ford. Yeah, boy. I mean, these seats right here, they power fold shut. They power fold back up. And then when they are up, you can lean them up and lean them back. And let me tell you something. You can make yourself comfortable. And let me show you something else. My goodness, Lord have mercy. You've got cup holders back here. You've got speakers. You've got another USB charging port right there. You've got two cup holders right here. You've got storage compartments everywhere. You've got speakers. Oh my goodness. Vents back here. You've got lights. I mean, just, I don't, I don't know. I mean, this, this is what you call a true three row SUV. Bam. You've got another USB port right here. And then the way it works right here is these two seats right here are attached. This one is not attached. The seat belt for the middle actually comes down from here. So that is a little bit different, but hey, at least the middle person has a seat belt. Um, this button right here, again, I'm pushing both of these. It's forwards and backwards. I mean, you just have all the, the, the I don't know what to say. I mean, all the customization back here. Anybody back here can be comfortable. And the person sitting in the middle has a perfect view of the inside of this vehicle. It's just gorgeous. You've got cup holders there. I mean, 
I don't know what to say. There's another cup holder down here. There's more storage compartments down here. If you look up under this seat, you can slide this seat forwards and backwards. I mean, and then on the side right here, you can actually lean this seat just all the way back. I mean, just look. Like, I'm sitting back here. I can just... Uh-oh. I think... Oh. <laughs> you can fold it all the way forward. You can lean back. I mean, and if you pull that that and you lean forward, I mean, this seat's going to collapse on you. So, yeah, be, be mindful of that right there. So when you actually have to lean forward, it's not spring-loaded. I'm trying to get myself back comfortable. There we go. That's reasonable right there. You got your famous old crap handle. So if the torque of this three and a half liter V6 just so happens to sling you, you better reach up and grab that old crap handle and both of them do have it. So yes, both passengers in the back have an old crap handle. You've got your vents right here. You've got your LED light right there. Um, you've got another old crap handle right there. I mean, this thing's just, I don't know. If I was going to buy a three row SUV, I definitely choose the Expedition over the explorer i mean that's just what it is you know if you just want an suv the explorer if you want an S if you want a performance vehicle suv you know that's what you go for is the explorer but if you're actually looking for a three-row suv i'm definitely going to say choose the expedition because i mean the back seats those are the type of seats that you that you see in a sedan you've got the sedan space back there you've got your seats that sit far enough up off the ground i mean if you look the seats are not even sitting on the ground they're up off the ground so yes that's the one i definitely choose is an expedition over the explorer i mean i love explorers but three rows expedition is the way you need to go Of course, we still have our capless fuel door, so the days of losing that cap is over with. Your tail lights on this thing are completely LED. I mean, matter of fact, let me show you something. All right, I've got the brake on right now, so hopefully it's not gonna move backwards, but I'm gonna turn every light on this thing on if I can. I mean, your lights on this thing are, now the only lights that are not LED are the reverse lights, but it's nothing to put an LED light in there. Um, again, if somebody says that you didn't have your turn suit alone, you could probably file a lawsuit against them because they are definitely bright and they are LED. Um, as you can see, you do get mirror turn signals on this thing. Yes, that uh, power folding gate just keeps moving itself up and down because I keep getting in and out of the vehicle. You do have a windshield washer slash camera washer for the camera back here. And that is important because you don't want to be dinging that camera up. Um, if you push this button right here, this opens your glass. So you can open the glass on this. That's one thing that Ford and Lincoln have been doing for a very long time is making it where you can open the glass or open the whole tailgate. So. And then if you push this button right here, it is power adjust. It is power operated. So you push it and it does open. This particular model did not have the kick your foot up under and not hit the tow hitch um, lift assist on it. But it, the higher up in the trim levels you do go, you can actually get that on this vehicle. And then of course you push it, the button right here to lower it down. All right, now let's talk about how this thing operates back here. Okay, I'm gonna fold all this stuff up <laughs> because you can drop even the second row seats from back here with these buttons right here. So the 3L, uh oh, I probably should have folded that. Oh, okay, it popped its headrest down. Yes. All right, the 2L, And this button right here is going to be the one that drops this one down. It actually would drop both of these down, this button right here. And then that one right there just folded that one down. So you look at how much space you have back here to get all that stuff in. All right, you push the 3R that brought the right seat back up. All right, pushing the, once both of these back seats are down, Pushing this button right here brings them both back up. Now, I hate to say it, but you cannot bring the second row seats back up. Those are more like a spring 
So you push that button right there and it just drops those seats down and does not bring them back up. And you can just pull these back up back here. You got more space back here, all your stuff to just hide all the things. You got a cargo net, you got your jack that hides up under this compartment right there. You would just pull that up and you got your jack right there if you need to change a tire. Um, I mean, you've got just so much storage space in this thing and the things that you don't need in your way taking up trunk space, they are hidden well up under these compartments. You've got lights, you've got hooks. I mean, you've just got all this stuff back here. So, yeah. And for something this big, being able to get 23 miles to the gallon, I truly think that is a major step in technology i mean if you just ask me that is a major step all right now this is probably going to be one of the shortest drives y'all ever see me do because this thing you saw it it's got like 12 miles to eat so all right now these things are powerful. These things are fast. These things will snatch whatever you need to snatch because, um, I'm gonna turn the climate control off and then turn it back on. You actually have a button for the heat of steering wheel down here too. All right, I'm gonna turn this light off. How do you turn it off? Oh, there we go, all right. We're in reverse. Actually, I'm gonna turn the lights back on so y'all can see me because it's kind of hard to see me. I mean, I'm literally looking at what's on the side of me from this camera. I'm not gonna get too crazy with this thing because this thing is huge and this is a pretty 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 well priced piece of machinery that Ford has engineered here. You talk about some daggum power boy. I'm gonna take this thing back to the Ford dealership before I mess around and sign my name on it. Cause let me tell you something. I enjoy things that are this powerful and this large and this flashy. I mean, I don't mean like flashy, flashy, but you know what I'm saying. Now, how do I get back down there? I got to go all the way around. All but yes, I mean, it's not, this thing doesn't have any blind spots. Like I'm literally, I can see everything that I need to see. I can turn this camera on while I'm, well, no, you can't, you can't turn it on while you're driving. If you're sitting still or you're going at low speed, you can turn that camera on. You can definitely hear those turbos spooling up in this thing, but it's not like a loud, annoying, you know, most people, they want a vehicle that's powerful, but they don't want it to be just like, Rah! you know what I'm saying? This is still a family SUV. This is still a, you know, just, I don't know. It's people think that having something this big means it has to be loud and obnoxious and not feel I mean, the steering wheel, it's easy to turn. I mean, you're not sitting here just, you know what I'm saying? That was a fuel level warning. You do get the sensors on the back that tell you when you're getting too close to something. I'm gonna park right by this Ford Edge ST. I'm gonna try to get this thing as in here as I can. I mean, if I wanted to, I could have used the park assist. It's got 10 miles of either. All right. Whoever buys this vehicle from Buster Miles Ford, I do have the emergency brake on. Whoever test drives this vehicle, I do have the emergency brake on.
Thank <laughs> you.